Hello, it's Joe Glines, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing myself. That's right, I'm going to split my personalities and interview myself, just so um, I kind of walk through the same process I've been doing with auto hockey um, users and experts. Um, just I'm gonna ask myself the questions, and just to have a little fun, I took the questions and I dropped them into the dialectizer, which I don't know if you know what that is, but you can translate things into redneck, Swedish chef, jive, um, pig Latin. Um, I didn't do the pig Latin, I couldn't pronounce it well enough. So um, just to have a little fun, okay? So let's get going. Um, so here's here's my question. It's in redneck. Um, please give me a general on overview your background, your education, focus, any background in programming. Oh, good question. Um, so I, I spent nearly 20 years um, working in statistics. And um, specifically, I um, I focused in market research doing survey analysis and using regression and, and cluster analysis and segmentation, things like that to understand um, what drives customers, what, what drives employee satisfaction, things like that. Uh, I have a master's in market research, an undergrad in marketing, so I understand both of those very well. And uh, so I, I did that for quite a while. And then I switched over the last five years or so, um, working in internet marketing, working in the database side of things. Uh, and then I started using AutoHotKey and automating a lot of stuff. But um, no, I don't have any real background in programming. Um, I, I did pick up Python for a little bit, for about a year and a half. I was attending Python meetups and learning it. But I, um, I've never, I don't know if I can say that. I, you know, I've had a couple programming classes when I was you know, uh, a kid. But um, I, I never actually really went to college to be a programmer. Um, uh, in SBSS, the statistical tool I use, I, I program a lot in that. It has a very peculiar syntax language, but they do use functions and macros. And um, I was using, um, in hot, auto hotkey, I was using hot strings a lot to pull up those macros um, for quite a while. So let's see, now we're switching to the Swedish chef. So he's gonna ask me a question. Who, why did you get started using auto hotkey? And it was how and why. Okay, how and why. Well, basically, um, I'm lazy and I, I'm, I really hate re doing things manually, which, which could be, you know, find e more efficient ways to do things. So a lifetime ago, um, I'd say over 20 years ago, I was using autocorrect in Word and Excel and PowerPoint to um, help me write my reports or help me write stuff. And basically, it works the same way. The autocorrect in, in Word, you can say, hey, when I type... Um, these letters swap it out with with something else um, and that's how hot strings work in auto hotkey um, the trouble with that was in in like in word they had a different dictionary at the time than what was in excel and that one was different than what was in powerpoint and so you had to keep them all updated and then again of course you're on a different computer then you had to do it all over again and it was a real pain so i i searched around at the time i found robo type i was gonna say robocop but of course that doesn't sound right but um it basically allowed me to do hot strings in in any program and uh and i used that for quite a while and i forget why but at one point i i think i just said you know this isn't quite cutting it for me and i was searching and looked for a little bit more and uh oh, sorry getting some messages here and uh and i found auto hotkey and so i started using hot strings um, for quite a while, I'd say the first three years or so, I was using it for, for doing hot strings, which were amazing. I mean, they helped me save. I still use uh, actually the solid of the same ones of what I used then. I still use them for um, automating writing in my syntax in SBSS. Um, those haven't changed, or also my email addresses and passwords, right? Those are, it's awesome to have this, the, my fingers. Uh, but then I um, switched over to internet marketing and I realized, hey, I, if I could automate grabbing stuff from a web page. Um, it would really help me because every time I navigate here, I have to get this this field and this value and this value. And I wanted to programmatically be able to grab that and then be able to use that. And so I first started using that um, to help me with work in learning object-oriented programming. And then I started getting into using functions and everything, you know, more advanced with AutoHotKey. And, uh, and then I was blown away at what you could do with them um, and, and absolutely loved them. Uh, let's see. Oh, interesting. I have two Swedish chefs in a row. I didn't realize that. Um, so now we're going to ask the next question. Would you recommend blokes neuter auto hotkey start with? Eh? <laughs> um, so you're asking me what I think people should start with auto hotkey with. I'd say definitely um, the two would be my go to is hotkeys first and hot strings second. They are by far, I think, the easiest to learn. 
and simple to implement and very quick to pick up and you don't have to learn anything crazy, right? It's super easy for anybody and virtually everyone has a need for hot strings. I, I know a lot of people, I'd, I'd say the majority of people I talk to with auto hockey don't use hot strings and yet I still firmly believe they have the need. Um, they just don't think they do. And if they realized, you know, like, oh, actually I do type this over and over, right? Or just using the spell check, right? The built-in one that has a spell check with over 4,000 words, right? It's running in everything I do. And I do instant messaging on my computer. Um, and, and that's awesome because everything I send is, has been spell checked. Um, and then we'll see um, after, oh, sorry, Swedish chef. After they get comfortable with above, what did they move on to next? Um, so let's see, after hot strings and hot keys, I'd say the basics of first understanding functions um, would be by far the thing that really helped me the most is learning how functions work. Um, and then regular expressions are awesome if you have the need. But overall, um, I'd say using the, um, the control send type things and uh, yeah, I think that would be my next step. I think after that, it really depends on what your needs are. Because for me, and I think a lot of people that work in an office, right, in the corporate world or in, in a business, um, if you're using Excel, um, then connecting to Excel and automating that, or if you're using Outlook and emailing a lot of people things, um, then automating either of those is, is definitely, I used it, that was the two I used a lot, as well as tied into that web scraping. Um, and with Excel and the web scraping, um, I have some really good tutorials on my website. At least I think they're really good, uh, but they're helpful because the, they're, you connect with COM, which is the component object module from Microsoft, which is basically the backbone to how you connect to it. And you can programmatically interact with the programs and it's so much more reliable and consistent. Uh, it takes, a, it's a little bit of a learning curve, um, but the, I would definitely say start with Excel over web scraping because um, Excel is Excel is Excel, and that model for Excel doesn't change. The objects don't change. And, and, and actually, they don't. The problem is with web scraping, web pages are built very differently, and how you actually go and get values from them or set values on them changes drastically depending on how they were written. And it's, it's a steep learning curve. But um, both of those are great. And then if you're emailing a lot, being able to automate that. The third one would be after that, which, again, if you have the need, uh, most services nowadays, most companies have APIs to interact with their data. And I, I love the ability that I can go out and connect with the service that either we're already using or like the Google Translate um, or, I mean, there's, there's, Google has like a dozen, the Google Places and Google Maps. You can programmatically query their database and get just the results you want back. And, um, and generally speaking, they don't really change your API services often. So once you build it, it'll work and give you exactly what you want. Um, and it's, it, there, we have a great webinar on APIs. Um, actually, we also have one on Outlook and a webinar on Excel um, and, and a webinar on web scraping. So I guess those are good places to start. All right, so our next question, this is in Jive. So, um, what prevents suckers from adopting out of hockey? Um, that, that is actually a great question. And I have a forum post, which, um, you know what, let me share my screen and I'll, where am I going to start? Uh, desktop three, hold on, let's do it here. I'm going to share this, let me minimize that. Let me, did I, no, I closed that. Let me pull it up. Uh, actually, you know, I'll just pull it up because I pulled it into here into Word. Um, so it, it, the, the link, which I'll, you know what, can I click it? Here we go. It'll pull it up just in case you want to go here and post a reply and add to this thread. Um, the, the subject, I believe, was John Ford, who I interviewed a couple. Oh, no, Captain Owen started it. Sorry. Um, I, I think it was a great um, question overall. But um, it's a, it's a you know, interesting topic. I had written this out here, um, but let me go ahead and walk through it here. So one, um, people do not like to change. Right, I think that's my biggest one. They, they see things, they, they do things the way they've been doing before, and they just don't want to change. Um, often people don't even realize, they don't recognize the repetitive actions they do and don't realize that, and, and it happens to me too, right? I, I've done stuff just the other day, I don't remember which one, what it was, but I realized, well, holy cow, I'm doing this over and over. I should write a hotkey or you know, a little script to take care of this thing. And um, it's, it's, you get better at it in time, I think, but when you first start doing it, you don't realize how much of what you do is the same thing over and over. Um, everyone's definitely too busy, point four there. Um, they, they all think that's great. Uh, the, the, the wonderful story I love is the whole, the, the two guys in the forest are cutting down a tree and they're trying to um, 
cut the tree down and cut the tree down. This guy walks up to him and says, hey, what are you guys doing? They're like, oh, we got to cut this tree down. They're cutting, cutting. He goes, well, have you stopped to sharpen the saw? They're like, no, no, we don't have time for that. We got we to gotta cut the tree down and they're working so hard. You know, the moral of the story is if you actually, you know, took a few minutes to sharpen the saw, you know, you can cut a lot faster. And so in work, you know, basically, if you, if you learn a bit more, invest in yourself, um, then in the long run, you actually work faster and you're working smarter, not harder, and you'll get more done. You just have to take the time to, to pull it out, no matter how busy you are, or just tack it on. That's what I did at first. Um, I didn't stop doing what I was doing. I just said, hey, I'm going to work two hours more per day, right, and have this two hours to invest in myself. And then slowly over time, I was able to stop doing that because I automated so much of my job that um, I could actually spend the two hours a day um, learning because no one knew that I wasn't actually doing the work then because I had automated it. Um, but yeah, um, most people definitely think in the short term, not the long term. They, they think this, there's a lot of different aspects of this is it's too small to be automated. That's almost never true. Um, they think it's a one-time need. Yeah, that's almost never true. You, you, it, it, it seems like it is, but then you get to reuse so much of what you did to solve that problem um, in so many different times and different ways you can leverage the code that you already used. Um, I'm the only one that would use this. Yeah, often, whether it's even someone at your own company or on your team or even just back on the forum and stuff, right? I mean, other people have a lot of the same needs. And so uh, just remember, even if you do it, um, other people might probably have a need for it. Um, and, and also, also they think it'll take a long time to actually to automate. And I've literally come up with things in, in under a minute to, to automate or adding a hot string. You know, you're like, oh, I should, I should add a hot string for this thing. I keep doing it. And you know what? Adding a hot string, it, it takes like, 15 seconds, you know, it's easy. And there's no reason to ever have that go through your mind and not just do it right then because it's so fast and easy. Um, so stepping out of that, the next one, the short term one is that also a, a lot of companies, I think when you talk about automation, they think it's going to be very expensive. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be right. It, sometimes even for a decent project, you can have it done in, in a few hours, right, or, or maybe a, a day. And when you look at, if you're gonna keep using this thing over and over, over months or over years, it, it's a no brainer, right? Absolute no brainer to, to, to automate it. Um, even if not automating the entire thing, just automate part of it, automate half or three quarters of it, and then still use a human to interact with it. But um, the amount of time and also the satisfaction of your, your person doing it, it just, it's just amazing. Um, Often I'll run into this where I will I will talk through people what I'm doing and and they just kind of nod and say yes they they love it but they um they don't actually understand what you're doing and so they don't get that like hey this could easily be um, applied it's not the exact example that they have but it could be applied to what they're doing um, and the other one was just managers in general just don't encourage um, their employees to automate which is really sad. They don't actually go out and hire people um, with the skill set, which is crazy. Um, they should be looking for this and finding people, even if it's not auto hotkey, right? It's just look for people who work smarter, not harder, who, who find ways to be faster and more efficient. Speaking of which, by the way, um, I, I, if you've probably seen my other videos, but like this is just an example, right? Where I put my taskbar on the right. Um, I have all of these icons up here, which will launch programs. And then I can see, I can launch all of these and I can actually fill this up and have it go on to the, the next part and still be able to read the names of all of these. And then down here, these are all shortcuts to my folders, right? And so I can very quickly um, launch one of, I think this is what, a five by four looks like matrix. So 21 programs. Um, and I have 20 folders down here that uh, are, I can, are a click away, right? And, and now I've switched over using to Jean Lalonde's um, QAP tool, but I've had this for so long and they're right there. I've, I haven't changed that in, in what I do, um, but it definitely could be, it could be the same way. But my, my point just being is like, there's a lot of ways to work more efficiently, right? And um, just changing the way you, you set up your desktop and or um, how you use the computer, besides you got a hotkey, right? We should be focused on that. All right, let's see, we're back to Redneck here. Um, what if don't know managers like the vomits let use auto hotkey in automation? So I don't know why managers don't look to hire more people that, that automate. Um, I, I think for the most part, the vast majority of people that are in management don't, they're not at all technical more often than not. And they don't realize the vast majority of stuff that is done that people are doing as work could be to some degree automated, right? Simply. And, I don't know how to, 
to get more managers to realize like actually what you're doing could be automated. It's, it's crazy to me that um, they don't look out, look for more people that are, are, you know, work smarter, that work, you know, use macros, use um, hotkeys, uh, whether hotkeys in auto hockey or not. I just mean a, a simple way to launch things, right? There's so many ways to work smarter and yet it never, almost never comes up in like an interview or, or at least when the, the um, a headhunter or recruiter is trying to find someone. Right. They, they rarely care if you're a geeky kind of person that, you know, works smarter. It's it's they, they focus a lot of other things which are important. But why if you could pick and choose, why wouldn't you find someone who's much more efficient at what they do? And then lastly, the back to the Swedish chef here. Can you provide a Zoom, a specific slash custom uses a auto hotkey? Yes, I'm glad you asked that. Can I provide some custom and specific uses of auto hotkey? Okay, this is actually mainly why I want to do this interview. It was um, the other day, if you watched the interview with Chad and Maestri, um going through, uh, um, we went, I went through, you know, we discussed the stuff Chad and I had worked on together, but there are a ton of things that I have done. Um, oh, actually, there's a good, let me go back to here. There's a ton of things I've done that I use day in, day out that I used to use. So let's, um, let's just go ahead and start here. Uh, one example would be, let me, let me come in here, I'm gonna copy this and go to that other word. Now, if I hit Control G, notice it pasted the plain text. And now Word, actually I could come up here and say paste special plain text, or I think one of these, there we go. That's just the keep, keep text only. But, um, but I can undo and I can hit Control V, notice I still have the formatting, but if I undo, undo and hit Control G, Right, so I, ha I have a hotkey that I can just say, paste plain text, right? And that's one I use so many times a day. Actually, another one, just made me think about it, is my, my screen clipping tool, right? I can grab this and I can even switch windows. And now this stays up here and I can grab another one if I want, right? And then I could scroll up and down of whatever, um, especially if you're in a laptop, right? And you need to look at different parts of it or different programs or whatever. Um, and then when I'm done with it, I can just go like this. Um, and then the other day I incorporated it where, you know, let's, 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 stick to some actual English here. I'm gonna grab this. Now let's say I wanted this, notice that's an image, but if I hit Control T, it should, I think it's Control T, um, it should perform OCR on this image. There it goes. Oh, interesting. Oh, you know what? That's weird. It picked, uh, let me reload and do it again. I'll have to look at that. It must have, it had the other ones in memory. Um, because that was, that was not this one. So let me retry this here. It does take a second to run. Um, there we go. So it's performed OCR. Now this is on my clipboard. And so I could just paste this somewhere. Um, I'm just, obviously I have the text here, but what if it was an image, right? What if you were looking at something on a website that had, a, or a mem on Facebook that you loved and you wanted the text, right? It's a simple, easy way to get the text. Um, so those are a couple, let's see, what else? Um, I use hotkeys like there are, sorry, hot strings like there's no tomorrow. Also, actually hotkeys. So I can hit apps V. That's a shortcut I made to go. And of course, it launches on the other screen. Um, it brings up my display settings um, for video settings because my apps D is device manager. And so that'll pull up device manager. My apps N is for networks. Um, actually, let me, let me pull up my main script here and I'll show you at the top. Um, it's going to pull it up here. Come on, studio. So I also run, actually like this, this clock right here, this is an auto hotkey script that I use to replace my start menu because why, why do I just want something that either says start or has the window shell, right? So I can put the date and time and I can remove it from my system tray. So I have more room. Um, the, uh, the screen clipping tool toggle, I can click a button and it will throw it, of course it needs to work. Um, it'll, it'll toggle it to the other monitor. Um, and here's my menu, which actually I'm gonna touch on that in a minute, but what I wanted to show was, let me scroll down here a little. So, so do, do, do. here we go. Oh no, so, the, so this will suspend it, this will hibernate. Um, and then the, the, the apps key is the thing to the right of your right alt key, um, possibly, some keys, 
keyboards have a different key there. Um, for mine, it's the apps key, and I use it to launch things. So I can hit apps A, and it'll launch the Windows Spy. I can hit apps C, and it'll launch my uh, accessible viewer tool. You can notice here I've, I've blocked out some commented amount, but um, the one, here's the device manager. That's how I did that. Um, this is the changes. I can change my default editor. Right now it's set to studio, so that's what we're looking at now, but I could switch it, easily switch it to site if I wanted to, or, or to notepad or whatever, whatever I've had before. Um, the fine text function. So these, are, I have a combination, and that was the other thing I would say is, um, Early on, I didn't have a pattern for things, and I got to have so many hot strings and hot keys that I, I started getting confused in things because I just didn't use them enough, and it was there were so many. And so that was I said, oh, I'm going to make a pattern of things, and that way, like it's apps key and a letter often will launch a program, and that helped me, you know, uh, make it a lot easier for me to to remember the things. It's kind of like mnemonics in that sense. Um, anyway, and then then there's a lot. I mean, this file is. I think over 2,000 lines or about there. Yeah, a little bit over 2,000 um, lines long. But um, so that, that's my main one, which I have a lot of other interesting stuff built into this. But what I wanted to do is to show you um, my, my menu. Now this menu I built in AutoHotKey and it launches other things. Actually this one, this is my XML syntax writer. So I use um, Maestrius XML class and because I don't use it that often, I start forgetting how to do certain things. And so I can come here and go, oh, I'm using it, but I want to import or create it from XML file. And I can do this and it will, when we change this to hotkey, it will drop in the syntax that I've told it to dump in there, right? Um, and if I hit my hotkey again, pull it up, so any of those, the SQL help is awesome. awesome. There's a lot of stuff. Actually, let me, let me play with that a little. So SQL, um, it, these were tables that I, frequently hit and had a certain template. And so like, let's say I wanted to look at the, the email dashboard, right? This is my email dashboard template where I hit a certain table, do a lot of really confusing stuff. But um, after I wrote it out, I just stored this and now I can pull it up in a second, right? Um, or also I, I noticed a lot of the people I worked with had, they would do these joins and they would manually join these tables, the same tables like every time, every day, several times a day and manually start over. And I'm like, oh, I can just come in here and automate you know, sending that text to join exactly what I want and have them preset to be a certain way, right? And make it easy to just comment out things, a um, really easy way. Uh, but I also noticed there were um, things that I, I did a lot that um, like, let's say the, um, all right, the dog ran whatever, home now. So let's say this list was actually, why don't we, I'm going to duplicate some of these. And, and I wanted to, um, let's say I wanted to put this in a SQL query, in an endless query. But first, I also wanted to make sure I didn't have any duplicates. Um, and I wanted it all uppercased, right? So that actually comes up pretty often when you're running a lot of SQL queries. So I can highlight it. I can hit here, SQL, and I'm going to say sort, uppercase, dedupe, and count. Um, so now that that deduped them all, it uppercased them, it alpha alphabetized them, um, and then it uh, sorted it, yeah. And then, but then I want that in the in list so I can highlight it again and say, let me in list with the SQL wrapper. And so that automatically puts them in there where when I put it in my query, um, I would have the single quotes around the rest of it and it would just do an in list query. Um, and actually I have this built in here. I think if it's over 999 items, it breaks them into separate ones. And so that way I know because in SQL queries, uh, at least on the, I forget, we used PL SQL. Um, I could only have up to 999 in each in list and allowed me to easily um, do that. Or let's say, um, let's say that, that a lot of the words had the same beginning, but really I want to just the first, like this, ran, uh, the, all of the randoms would be the same. So I can highlight them and say SQL help, and I'm gonna do um, truncate items to X numbers and dedupe. So I can click this and says how many characters, let's say I wanted the first four characters, and that way the rand, right, so random would only be left with rand. So I'm gonna hit four and hit okay, and it didn't work, nice. It's been a couple years since I've used this. Um, that should have worked though. Let's try it again, SQL. Truncate. 
for there it goes um not sure what happened but now you notice the rand is just there once and everything is down to three to four you know if it was l less than four it um it stays that way but everything got truncated to four characters um and, and just some it depends on your your nomenclature of your your what you're doing your query on um also let's say that i had a i had a, i had a matching pattern it's a like statement um so like this table i could easily take that list and it will it will write it you know reference each table and do the like command and throw in my percents for me now granted um i had one also that it would have the percents just on one side and not the other it doesn't matter right it was all however i wanted it so it was a quick easy way for me to start writing sql code um, let me stick in here and see what else so i'll keep coming down here the internet marketing so each of these were tools, the testing tool, actually I haven't run this in forever. Let's, let's give it a try though. Um, the first time I, I went to a testing group uh, uh, for testing a new web page, I, I was amazed and quite frankly afraid. Um, we went into a room and um, we all sat there and stared at the computer and, and tested each link manually. And there were you know dozens and hundreds of links. So let me, let me go to, um, it doesn't really matter here. I'm going to pick a page. But now, see this little magnifying glass down here? Um, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to hit my hotkey. I think it was my hotkey. Actually, I don't, I don't recall. Oh, there it goes. And it, it actually read the page. And this, um, this, this is the, um, these are the IDs, if I remember correctly, on the page um, and where to start from. And it didn't default to a certain one, so this isn't actually a typical page. Let me see if I can do a different one. And see if it'll it'll default to one. Oh boy, come on! Oh, and it looks like it crashed. That's interesting. Let's try it again. Testing. I'll launch it. Even if it doesn't do it, I can still run the code. So. Oh, it's still not doing it, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna start somewhere. What it's doing, what I wanted to do is is like from here to the left, this is all part of the frame and it, and it's not part of what we were testing. So it was basically everything in here and I didn't wanna be testing everything else, especially when you see what it does. So I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna say, uh, let's go ahead and verify URLs and we're gonna start, I'm gonna hit submit. And what it does is it rips this page and every link Boy, it didn't actually do some stuff, but it's on the, the it opened Excel. Yeah, that's interesting. Let me let me try this again. Um, I I have this one I haven't used even longer since the other one, and maybe TI has really changed their um their their page. Let let's go to another a different page too, just to test it here. Wait for it to load a little bit. Yeah, no worry, come on. All right, I think the page is done. I hit my hotkey. It's reading the page right now, I think, which apparently it's a big page. I'm gonna reload it. Hit my hotkey. It's reading all the IDs on the page, which can be quite a few. Come on. What it does is it goes through, it'll update this page. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna try something a little higher this time. Let's just see if that'll work. I'll verify the URL, submit. Let's see if it'll do it. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like, interesting. It's it's not getting the, uh, let's let's try a very different business. Actually, let's try, let's try just a whole different, a regular, like a non-product page. I'll try it. This will be the last time, and then we'll. Oh, I did actually. So that one worked. Um, so now that that worked, let me try one other one. Let me try one other one. I'm going to reload this page. And instead of picking that, I'm going to pick a different. Um, oh, 
That probably won't do anything. Yeah, that was stupid. All right, last time. No, okay, anyway, it goes and rips all the links. It, it'll put down here the, um, the hyperlinks. I should have left that original one just to talk it through. It puts up the most frequently used words on the page, uh, but it also pings each link to see if the links are actually valid. So it, it saved us a ton of time. Um, sorry, I can't get it to, I should have tested this once before I, I launched it, but uh, anyway, let me exit out of it. But that was one that, that I think they still use, um, but maybe their frame changed, so they probably, well, you could still pick it if you know what you're doing. Uh, but let me see what else is in here. So this was another cool one. Um, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. That's what I just had. Actually, right now, let me, let me, so this right here, the stop, like that's actually, let me, let me hit my pause button. And I don't know if you can hear the, the music playing right now, but it's a little uh, music player that I built to, I have my own hotkeys to launch, to, to skip this, the song I'm on, to delete the song I'm on if I really dislike it, to um, pause, um, to, and then I can um, hit something open and I can it I can tell it what folder to look at and then pick a certain folder and it'll go and it'll look at all the files in there it'll randomize them and then start working through them um, so that was a, a it's it's probably like 50 lines long if that but I love it because it's exactly how I think right the the hotkeys that I use to, to tell it what to do um, it's it's awesome I probably use that nearly more than everything else because I always have some music playing and compare sets. This is the one I was going to get to. Um, this one was cool because often when we were doing that website testing, the web page testing, we're like, hey, are the new, are all of the new IDs on this page? And um, it was like, well, I don't know how many are there and which ones are there. And so um, what I did was I took a list of here's, here's a list A and here's a list B, right? And the question is how many of these overlap and which ones do and then which ones aren't in um, which ones are in both. Um, so, so if I run this, it'll show me, hey, the, these are what's just in A, these are what's in B, and nothing apparently was in both. Um, but if I, actually, let me just cut down here and copy. I'm gonna copy some of these in here, and then down there, I'll put four, and I rerun it. Now you can see these are, are only in A, these are unique to B, but these are in both, right? And so it was a very quick, easy way for me to, to look at that. And I get the counts too. Um, but um, it, it's, is it sexy? No, but you know what? I, and I, I suck at GUIs. So I'm like, it, but it works. And, and it was so easy to do. Um, so that was one I, I really liked. It was, it saved a lot of time. Um, this one, um, Team site didn't allow for certain types of characters. And so I could easily highlight text and it would replace the characters where, actually, let's see if it'll work. So Joe was here. I, actually, I don't know if it'll spaces. I don't think it replaces, but let's say, and you are not, but you did, didn't know that, okay. Now I think a lot of these, if I remember correctly, um, are not legal in Team Site. So I'll come in here, um, replace characters for Team Site, and wow, that did not do anything I thought it should have. And I'm not even going to monkey with that. I don't know what was up with that. Let me let me try this one more time here. Actually, don't no, let me reload first, just to make sure that wasn't something weird. SharePoint, oh, I am, oh, there we go. So see the ampersand was replaced with, that's the HTML code for ampersand. Um, interesting enough uh, that uh, I thought that wouldn't be legal. Um, apparently the line breaks also, it was fixing that for me because that I know was an issue. Uh, but that one, I saw people manually going through. These are people who aren't techie people having to figure out what, what does and doesn't work. And so I wrote a script to, to make it simple. Um, the other cool, cool one is, uh, the HTML preview. So I would have HTML and I would say like, how is it gonna, I'm gonna go post this online, but I had no way to preview it, which is really insane without publishing it and then going and looking and, and actually making it live and it was crazy. So I wrote this script when I threw in some example HTML, um, 
so let's just pretend this was the HTML I wanted to test, uh, but you would basically paste in your HTML here and then hit run, and it opens, I think this is an ActiveX window if I remember, I, I can't quite remember, but this is how it'll probably look, and you can test, oh, is that a hyperlink? Yes, it works great, um, and I don't have, then I can take it and go publish it, or I can make a change here, um, and let's say I wanted this to, to have a, A, a bold so strong as bold now now it's bold right so I can just test it here before I actually publish it so that one was that saves me a ton of concern and, and, and angst um, encode URL that um, that let's see here if I had a which here I do um, it will a lot of times I would be testing queries and I wanted to parse them out on the um, ampersands and the question marks right, because I was doing like an API query or testing it and I wanted to parse them out. Um, and they would be URL encoded. And so words that were like percent 20 for spaces um, were hard to read. And so I can highlight this, come in here, SharePoint, no, not SharePoint, sorry, here, decode URL. Um, and actually that one, you know what? It's funny because I have a hotkey for that. Let me see if I can remember it. I think it's Alt-D, apparently not. Alt E is encode, I think. Nope. Is it control? Oh, let me let me pull this up here because I think it's in my main script. Um, decode. Where? Oh, you know what? That I think I moved that to my menu with. No, that's not that. I don't have my menu visible here. Um, oh well, but it'll it'll it'll. Yeah. Where is my pause? Okay, so I paused just to find it here. So, but it's Alt W. So I hide that at all. Hit Alt W, and that will parse it. Um, on the question mark and ampersands and it in densities just so it's easier to see where they are. Uh, but, and then if I undo that and here, I think it was Windows Alt D to, to in, no, must be E to encode it. Yeah, and that, that will URL encode those characters um, in case that's what you needed. But uh, anyway, so those, those were helpful. Let's see what we got else in here. I am, um, yeah, these, these just load up certain things. This one, actually, I wish I could demonstrate it because it was amazing, but um, our newsletter was in a SharePoint server where you had to go and do web scraping, and then in order to publish, to create the articles, I had to go to a different website in TeamViewer and load the articles, and it was painful of choosing dropdowns and stuff, but basically, I automated the transfer of them where it used to take hours down to like a minute. I mean, it was, it was amazing. Um, this one allowed to easily get the path to a certain network drive, which um, um, it would take the file you have selected and put it back to the, the full networked um, path to the file because if you're gonna give it the link to somebody, of course, if I've made a shortcut to it, it won't work on their computer and this way it gets the full path to the file. Um, in SharePoint, uh, we had a lot of different uses for SharePoint. And uh, I, I wrote a lot of ways to base it. more often than not, it was scraping um, information from the web page to to then use elsewhere, and so that helped us um, me work a lot faster. Um, the other stuff that in SharePoint that I would do is uh, I had to uh, run each week. There would be like let's say ten or fifteen uh, email campaigns going out, and I would want to create a folder. Um, with the SQL code in it, and then um, also have the CSV file and a couple other files there, and and a local version of what the web page, you know, the web page was I scraped, um, saved, and so did that automatically did that for me, um, and it actually, if I remember right, create folder and SQL file, so that actually had my SQL template which I had written, and it made it really easy to to go open my template for the query. Um, this one would actually compare the calendar, um, two calendars I think. Um, then I had seed and test list to upload stuff and this, this would allow automate uploading those. Um, then I could also point to a file and say, hey, I want this tab delimited file to be converted to CSV 
Um, and then I had another one that was for, um, for Asia. And so it would break out. It looked at the country. It looked inside the file and where the country was. And if the country, let's say, was China, it put them in one file. If it was, um, let's say, Taiwan, it put them in another file. And if it was India, it put that in a third file. Set automatically naming the files with the names of the countries um, really saved me an amazing amount of time. It's, it's hard to describe how, many, how much time each of these things saved me. Um, in email, um, again, it was a lot of using, uh, connecting and web scraping with our services. Um, I think this, this one, the behavioral lits group. So let me pull up TI again. And so I would have to build a query. Uh, oh, actually that one, I don't have to be on this one. I use their API. Sorry. I'm just remembering here. So let me launch it first. Um, email behavioral lit GP. GPN parametric, yeah, because the other one's a parametric search. So this one, I believe, um, notice, let me, um, it's this little target here. I'm gonna hit my hotkey and it should come up and ask me, what's a family ID? And so I happen to remember, because it was 911, right? Was, um, I think it's the MSP 430 um, family ID. When I hit okay, it does an API call to the servers and returns back the literature associated with that product. And then I can use that and notice how they're listed. I can use that in my in-list query. Right, so um, I would, so basically I would take this and hit, you know, paste that there. Um, I would probably do it again. Let me hit my hotkey again. Um, I, maybe it was 211, was a big one. No. Nope. Um, maybe 411. One of them, I mean, they can have hundreds if not thousands. There we go, that's a bigger one, 459, right? So I can put that in here. And also I have one which I didn't demonstrate earlier. So. Um, Hey, you know what? I need this to unenlist. And so that'll take that. So now I have 733. And see how these are all beginning with BQT24010, at least what you see here. Um, this is where I could say, hey, you know what? Let me take this. I'm going to um, truncate the items down to, let's say, five characters, fine, because I think there's like seven right now. Um, and now it took that list and it shrunk it down to 113 unique items. Right, and that way, what I probably would want to do is to throw this with a percents on the other side, and that way, the um, depending on how many there were, if there were thousands, right, this could be a faster way to query than uh, um, if not. So, um, so where was I here? Email. Um, th this this was a si silly one, but it allowed me to just go in there and and click a bunch of check boxes. I I can't think if I guess let let's let's pretend here I was in my email, and um let's use my Yahoo just because that's a junk one. And so there's nobody's actually writing it for anything. See these check boxes, it would automate going down and clicking. I, the problem was there was a select all, but often there were too many. I didn't want all of them. I wanted the first 50, right? And, and, and I would have hundreds on that page or thousands even. And so I wrote a little loop to just basically go, it would, it would start here. You know, I would pick the first one and then it would go do tab, tab. And it depends on the webpage, three, four, tab, and then hit space. And then tab, 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 space. Um, and so it, it would, I would just be able to say, okay, go do the next 50 and bam, it would go through and um, select the next 50 for me. And then I could just move all of them. Um, so that was a really cool, easy tool. Email, uh, breakout CSV list. That actually, I, that would actually allow me to pick and choose. It would go and search the file and I could say, hey, what, what countries do I want to break out? The other one was automated where it would say for, for China, look at these three countries. This one, it would actually read the file, tell me what's available, and then I could pick and choose from it. Um, and, and, and keep in mind, I haven't used these things in over two years, so um, it's been a while. Uh, these were all particular. This was, uh, Silverpop was our email vendor for a long time. We had a, they had an API. I wrote a lot of tools. Um, hey, my son's on the way home. And uh, I wrote a lot of tools to you know, interact with their API. And, uh, um, API. We have a webinar on APIs, they're amazing. Um, I'm not gonna go into, I don't have access to the tool anyway, so I can't really explain it, but I could automate, instead of using a web browser to go do these things, I had a tool that would automatically um, do them and I didn't have to go log in and do all this stuff. It just cranked it out. All right, the next one here is um, my auto hotkey groups where I can have like this will launch different tools I can use, right, for, for doing stuff in AutoHotKey. Um, this, this one is just a simple VLC player. I'll be 
needing to listen to things and write down what people say. And in, in, in VLC, I don't think the space bar from a right works to pause it, or maybe it is a space bar, but I needed something else. So I rewrote, remapped it where I can hit a button. It's probably my, my hotkey that I mainly use to pause, start and stop the, the audio. So I can stay in word. I don't have to switch to VLC and I can just type, hit the button to pause it, finish typing what I heard, hit the button again, it starts playing it again and I can keep typing. So it's a, it's a very quick, fast thing for that. This is my web scraping syntax writer. So I'm gonna launch it here, and now I know it's gonna look a little weird. I'm gonna hit a different hotkey, but th this, this I can pull up and say, hey, I need to get a pointer to the current IE window. And so that'll throw in the syntax to do that. Um, and then I can say, get from home page, get a named array, um, let's get the class name. And I would go in and change out this, this element with the index of which one it is, um, and if I wanna store it or whatever but it, it automates writing my auto hotkey web scraping syntax. So it's, um, it's a cool easy one. There's a link on my site somewhere for that. Um, I actually did, oops, wrong one, sorry, here we go. The, um, oh no, actually I need to exit out of that one. Let me exit out, this is the literature one. That's my web scraping syntax writer. Let me exit out of that too. Um, back into here, auto hotkey. My API syntax writer, so this helps write syntax for um, doing API calls and parsing the XML and JSON. Uh, the auto hockey syntax writer, this one, again, it'll, it'll have examples. Actually, I don't even remember what, what's in here. I didn't do a lot in it. Oh, looks like ejects replace for doing GUIs. Um, I, yeah, I, I stopped because right about this time, I, I heard about Jean's QAP tool. And so most of my auto hockey stuff, if I click yet a different hotkey, it'll pull up another menu, which still kind of looks the same, but in my syntax assist under auto hotkey, this is all my auto hotkey syntax now that I can say, hey, I wanna um, pad a variable with a zero, right? And so here's the syntax and how to do that. Or let's say I was going to um, include, uh, do a, a for loop, right? This is the, the general syntax I use as a template with some things commented out that I can just say, oh, here's how I did that before, right? And so I'm not hunting down and going, finding all this stuff. These alone, like whether this is in a hot string or a hot key with, you know, however you pull it up, but this concept of having a template that you use for the something I do a lot, you know, start doing it right away. Start realizing, hey, I do this part a lot and, and store that one instance of like what makes the most sense to you and uh, have it at your fingertips, it's amazing. Um, let me come back in here. My regex tester, this will just launch. If you, uh, I have a, a series on regex, we did a, a webinar on it as well. But um, this is the older one, which actually, I think it's apps E. No, that launches something else, doesn't it? Oh, that, yeah, that's, that's the editor. Um, let me come back to studio. I don't know why I'm in sight. I, I almost always just program in studio now. And this is, this is the wrong one entirely, let me close that. Studio and Sight are, are very, both very powerful. Stu, studio, Maestrift has built in a lot of extra bells and whistles that are just incredible. So I highly recommend it, but I, Sight is still a great one, especially if you work in a lot of different languages. It's very helpful for that. Um, apps, uh, Element Spy, that stuff. Is that the one I was thinking of? I don't think so. I'm gonna save this, reload it. No, that elements by, that's, ah, that's the other like IWB2 learning tool one. No, what is the regex one? Huh, I am blinking. Maybe it starts with an O. I don't want that. Um, there's, that's for the group policy editor. Hotkey help, this by the way is a great one for noobs. Um, this, this by the way will launch my Hangouts one, but, um. Let me let me change that. Let me put it to this one and reload it so you can see it. Because if you don't know it exists, it's it's a great script. Um, I'm gonna launch it now. It it went and pulled um, all of the the hot strings I ha have running, um, as well as hot keys. And so across every script, and as long as you've defined them clearly, like these actually I didn't I didn't put in like what. I don't know why it's not pulling those. It should be putting in, those are my HTML ones. Um, but here, clearly I didn't apps key and C, I didn't put in what it does. And let me see if I can, because that should be my main script. So let me go apps key and C. 
So how you do it, so, so this, if you add it this way and say ACC viewer from Jethro, I believe. So I'm gonna save that and reload it. Um, actually, I probably need to uh, exit out of that one. Um, and not that one, this one, let me reload this one. And now apps key and C, we should see apps key and R, of course now it's sorted differently and that's interesting. You can also come in here and say, um, oh, that's right. This is a weird one because it doesn't, it didn't have, I had to change mine. So I'm gonna come in here in settings. I don't, let's say I'm gonna hide all the hot strings because there's just way too many. So show files with no hot keys, no hot keys, no. Somewhere in here it says, Show hot strings, here we go. And I guess I have to reload that. I thought it would take effect immediately, but. Here we go, so now I just have my hot keys. And now to, notice now here, the apps key in C, it has that right there. That is how it, um, it pulls that in and, and shows you what they are. So for people who are new to this, it's very easy. And even then, even if you're not new and you have a, a lot, like look how many I have running, how many hot keys I have running you know, from a hotkey. Um, it's easy to, to forget. Um, and it pulls in from any hot, any auto hotkey script you have running. So it's, it's super helpful um, to, to have it uh, if, you, if you're having trouble remembering your hotkeys. Let me exit out of that. All right, where was, oh, actually I was just kind of looking at stuff, huh? Um, oh, I was trying to figure out, well, the, the, the other regex tool I use, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, Second site window. This one, I don't know if it'll work. No, it, it used to um, create a second site window side by side, uh, but I haven't used, is it running? Maybe do I have to hit a hotkey? Second site window. Edit the script, let's see. I don't know if it needs a hotkey to do it. F11, interesting, so let's try it. F11. F11, that was not nearly as exciting as I was hoping it would be. F11, F12, let's see what that does. I don't read anything, I don't know about you. Oh, and that, apparently it's having some issues with stuff. Well, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, those did different different things here. And let me close that too. And where are we now? Spy, this is uh, Maestrius GUI creator. Um, and then under here, I have even more different things that just launch various scripts I've, I've made over time. Um, I did automate some stuff on LinkedIn, which you're not supposed to do, but I, I've toned down. I do stuff I don't think violates their policies anymore. Um, there, um, these are a couple, the, the reboot computer, sometimes I would remote desktop into my work computer and yet I couldn't click, I couldn't come up here and tell it to reboot. So I actually added this to my menu to make it easier to tell that computer to re reboot remotely. Um, or better said, I could remotely reboot my computer. Um, e email writer, I don't even know what this is, I'm afraid. Let me launch it, email writer. Right, emails from spreadsheet. Oh, wow, I forgot all about that. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that, but it, it basically, we, in our webinar, we demonstrate how I had a template in the spreadsheet. Um, I'm not sure what that was doing, but um, it's been a long time, let me exit out of that one. So these, these are the ones in my menu, which I use, um, I, I used them enough to, uh, to have them in my menu, but um, what I also, I'm not gonna go through like I did on these, because it would just take way, way, way too long, but I wanted to give you guys an idea um, this is my working um, folder where I, I put stuff that I've either worked on, you know, and I, I, I've played with is the best way to describe it. So um, each of these things, generally speaking, are, are a thing from the forum where I've tried different things in them. And, um, and what I should say is so, so under APIs or I've written scripts around. So APIs, like these are different APIs I've connected to right, and there's how many, there's 53 there, but under like things like Google, um, that one has another 12 under it. 
right? And the APIs are just insane, the stuff you can do with them. Um, and that's under, under just my APIs. And then if we go to AHK functionality, um, these are things that are kind of built into auto hotkey, different things you can do. Um, and so I, I just had way too many things in the other menu and I just thought about how can I organize them to help me keep track of where things are. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, I've played with auto hotkey is it's, 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 I think it's a benefit and a curse, right? There's so many things that it does. It's amazing. And yet at the same time, it can be confusing uh, because you just don't know overwhelming, right? Where do you start? I mean, there's so many different things you can use it for in, in what you want to do with it. And uh, it's, it's just incredible, right? It's whatever you do, you can probably automate it to some degree. Um, I got a lot under my webpage stuff where I've automated, you know, written stuff. And then I help people from time to time, different people I've helped. I put stuff in there just so, Oh, what are you doing? Something weird's going on there. Um, automating stuff with Selenium um, or now with the Chrome um, that Geek Dude made his library. I haven't touched it obviously in a little while, but um, it was pretty cool now that we can automate things with Chrome. Uh, then even under Windows, there was a ton of different things like using stuff with their Explorer or their controls or their systems um, or shell hooks. And you can, you can go and get information about your computer. You can change settings. You can, you know, hack, you know, hack sounds dirty, but you can, you know, mess with your registry to help adjust things that you might want. Um, I made a little tool here. So create drive via registry. If I launch this, hopefully my computer doesn't blow up. Well, I would have thought that would have just popped right up. Uh, but I can, I can select a folder and then it, it went through and said, what, what are the free drives that I have available? So I could pick a folder and make it my A drive. Um, and I hit okay. And basically the way that my, um, I'm gonna cancel this, but I'll explain it here. The way that my B drive is, so see, I have a B drive. That's actually my Dropbox drive, but I created a drive um, that gets set up in the registry. And so every time my computer boots up, it makes that folder, my Dropbox folder, an actual drive. And so it's a letter that I can jump to right there and everything's under it. And it's just awesome because I don't have to go create it. It also, it's always there before Windows. It's in the process of Windows loading, so it always exists. And so I never have to worry that like something loads out of order. And then if I reference something to it, it'd be broken because it's always there as far as Windows is concerned. Um, where was I? Oh, not there. Let me, let me go back to the, the working directory. Um, let me quickly summarize here if there's any that are really fun. Uh, there's some amazing stuff you can do built into auto hockey with the calendar. If you have anything around dates or times and stuff, the selection stuff, it's really cool and easy to use. Um, I don't know why I have Chrome there. That's funny. It should have been in the other spot. Um, yeah, they're just various things I've played with over the years. Um, it, it's amazing what's out there. So uh, that's it. That's that's some of the ways. And even then, I've I've you know probably forgotten more than I remember of the things that I do without a hotkey. It's it's the most amazing time saver ever. And thank you, Chris, for. Uh, stepping out and, and helping people like me who are not programmers yet I was able to um, do so much with it and I'm still again I, I barely know what I'm doing and it's still it's, it's just it's a it's a life changer it really is and um, I hope more of you take more time out of your life to learn more so you have more time to do the stuff you love all right uh, is that enough oh yes Joe thank you that's enough I'm, I'm talking to myself so apparently that is enough all right thank you Hope you guys have an awesome day and we'll catch you next time.